Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. We got a lot of stuff to go over, so let's just jump right into it. First of all, as the title and thumbnail suggests, we are, dare I say it, back. I hate to say it to even mention the fact that we could be actually in the October that we were promised called October. That is looking pretty good. And we can see that uh, Bitcoin's at some point it hit 66K. I know that there are different centralized exchanges, which will give you different prices. But right now we're at 65.8. So I don't know when you're going to watch this. If you're in the live stream, obviously you see the price right now. But later today, into tonight, uh, Bitcoin could be at, I don't know, 70K or Bitcoin could be at 50K. I have no idea. But uh, these are the days when we take a look at it and go, oh, that's right. This is why I'm here. It's because I did my job. I invested in the bear market and I get to reap the rewards. So congratulations, everybody. You did it. Ethereum's up almost 7% for Pete's sakes. BNB, wow, Ethereum's up pretty good. BNB, three and a half. Let's see, what's majorly up? Uh, 4% for Cardano. Watch out. Shiba Inu, 4.6. Bitcoin Cash. I shouldn't laugh. 11%. Good for you guys. If you, I don't hold Bitcoin Cash. If you do, good for you. 10% for Pepe. Now we're talking. That's in my Roth IRA, as a matter of fact. I'm, I'm not kidding. Immutable X, 10%. Ave, which we're going to have a story about Ave in a little bit. Injective eight, so on and so forth. So it's looking pretty good today. So why? Why is that? Well, I can give you a bunch of narratives and I'm going to give you three uh, why this could potentially be it. And we have it as far as like presidential election. Looks like DJT is going to start up with his own crypto. You can also take a look at the quantitative easing that's happening uh, in China and some other things that are going on. But again, these narratives are just narratives. You can find a narrative for anything. There may be 10 things going on behind the scenes, which I'm pretty sure I don't know about, you don't know about, because that's what whales do. So this is what we have for today. So first of all, before I even get into that, if you're thinking about taking profits, take some profits. You did your job, right? Even Vitalik Buterin, founder of Ethereum, takes profits. He sold eight or more meme coins today, apparently, for roughly 1.62 million in the past hour. This is from Spot on Chain. I'll try to link that in the description, but uh, yeah. And of course, Vitalik will probably come out and say, ah, I just did it for you know, reasons for charity. Great, whatever. But uh, for someone to win, someone's got to lose. And that's pretty much how it is. And if you're into meme coins, just know there's no utility. So here's what we got. So today the narrative is, again, we talked about this yesterday and Sunday. I think we even talked about it on Saturday. China and quantitative easing. It looks like uh, China is going through with their plans for stimulus. Chinese equities are rebounding on stimulus optimism. And the whole point is here is that China's finance minister, Lan Fuan, I think I nailed it, outlined the country's plan to provide a fiscal stimulus package to reinvigorate its economy. What they're doing is they're printing $350 million worth of renminbi or yuan, whatever the currency is. And for that point, that is an influx of liquidity into the market. What do people do with that liquidity? Well, we saw that in 2021 when America printed trillions of dollars. They're like, great, thank you. And they put it into equities, stocks, maybe real estate, maybe crypto. And that I think is part of the reason. And as a reminder, we take a look at the M2 money supply. People think that we're not printing money in America. Oh, we are. And we topped out in 2022. But since about oh, April 2023, we've been kind of sideways. But just recently, starting in February, we've been upticking and printing that money. And that's good for us. Now, if we print too much, we have inflation. And that's the balance that the Fed is trying to uh, give to us and give us a soft landing. We'll see if it works out. But that's one of the reasons why you see it. More liquidity in the markets. Crypto will go up. Equities will go up. Everything will go up as long as there's printing of funds and there is liquidity in the market. If you see a reversal, I do not see a world where we see Bitcoin at massive all-time highs or 100K if we drop out of liquidity. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. So there's that piece, quantitative easing. Also, and I've talked about this many times, I'll say it again, there's nothing's really going to like really, really pop off. Today's a good day, but come on, four or 5%, whatever. 11%, sure, I guess. But uh, I'm not here for that. I'm, I think we're both here for the same thing. We're here for 50%, 100, 200, 500%. Let's just be honest. Let's not lie to each other. We're all adults. Here's one of the reasons I think that's going to happen. We have a presidential election. I want to say it's 22 days away. Correct me in the comments section. And now Donald J. Trump, whether you love him or hate him, 
is going to be ripping out with his own crypto <laughs> digital asset token. I, I shouldn't laugh. This is great. I mean, how many presidents have we had? 2009, you know, we had, I mean, multiple presidents, did we not? And uh, nobody said anything about crypto. This is the first cycle where we've got a presidential, a former president and a presidential candidate rolling out their own token. Here's what's happening. It's called the World Liberty, World Liberty Financial Token. It's a long word. Or WL, WLF is going to based on Aave. It's not a fork of Aave's code, as some people are led to believe. This is confirmed by Aave founder, Stani Kulichov. Uh, the World Liberty Financial Token seems to be a segregated instance of its own Aave from the main Aave protocol. WLF's users are then serviced from its own separate KYC'd front end where it will presumably charge a trading fee. The question I have is, what does this do? What's the utility? Not that we need utility because that's what meme coins are for, but apparently this has something. That, and what we were talking about, we were talking about KYC and all that stuff, that really doesn't make a DeFi, but it says that makes it very much a DeFi project. Insofar as WLF is running on the largest smart contract, compatible public blockchain and leveraging core DeFi primitives. That's not DeFi. I mean, it's, run, it's running on the rails, but this doesn't make a DeFi. If you want that token right now, you got to get KYC. And if you're in the United States, good luck, because you have to be an accredited investor. So to me, this is just another S coin meme coin. Tell, tell me where I'm wrong here in the comments, unless it has some massive use case for, I don't know, loans, yield, real world assets, something, transfer of value, maybe perhaps like a tether, like a stable coin, but it's not gonna be a stable coin. So we'll see how it works out, but looks like it's gonna go live tomorrow. So you can check that out. Uh, there is the uh, uh, X account, which I'm, I think I linked in the comment section or the description, but uh, this is gonna to happen tomorrow. And again, if you're in the United States, good luck getting that. So that's kind of concludes why we're here. We're here because there's a lot of, there's a couple of narratives, that's what it is. But again, there could be five things going on behind the scenes that nobody really knows about. But it's a good day. It's a good day. It's a green day. I'm happy. You're happy. Everybody's happy. But I need you to be prepared for what's about to come. And there's great rewards like we've just seen just sticking to Bitcoin. However, we're slowly going to start moving into altcoins at some point. And uh, even friend of the show, Ben, will admit that. You know, once we hit to this specific Bitcoin dominance level of 60%, the bit ETH pairings, sure. I just want you to take a look at this because... This is just something to consider. There's a great website. It's called coingolive.com. And what it takes a look at is the percent price drop since its all-time high. And you'll notice that, number one, Bitcoin is only down 12%. It is the largest market cap that we have in the digital asset space, and it's only down by 12%, which is pretty damn good. I got to uh, be honest with you. Ethereum is almost 50% down. BNB is only 20%, and so on and so forth. And if you come on here, what I, what I want you to pay attention to is which ones are really close to their all-time highs? Well, SWE, which is a this cycle token, I believe it was created in 2023, it's only 4.6% away from its all-time high. And it's ranked number 20. It was just 28 two days ago. I know it was like 26 yesterday, and now it's 20. How much time do you think before it flips Bitcoin Cash and Chainlink? Let me know in the comments. But there's that one, and I've invested into that. I mean, I'm biased here. Obviously, you know that. I'm not going to talk about it unless I own it. Uh, but take a look at some other things here. Now, that's Ethereum, USDE, stable coins. Got it. Wrapped ETH is wrapped ETH. <laughs> Popcat, I believe that is a meme coin. It's only down 11%. <laughs> Another Bitcoin wrapped something or other. Arrow. But look at this one. It's down, it's, it's down here pretty far. Fast Token. It's ranked number 96. And it's only 3% away from its all-time high. And there's another one. Well, here's Ondo. That's, man, that's down 50%. I believe that's a BlackRock-backed uh, token. Bread is a meme coin. Manta. 
Where did I put it? This one. So there's fast token and this one I just totally blew past. Mantra, number 68. It's almost at its all time high. I mean, essentially it is. So let's take a look at those real quick. Again, what I'm trying to, to point out to you is not something to invest into. And I guess I did lie to you for a second there. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to talk about something I don't own, but I'm looking at this because I think it's interesting. And I think these are some that you can consider. So this one called Fast Token, again, it's only like three or 4%. Native currency of a layer one solution, EVM compatible. Performance, listed on 15 exchanges. How the hell did they do that so fast? And they're big in payments. So if we take a look at this, what you always want to take a look at though, is how much supply is out there right now? Because if you got, and this is what I want you to, this is just a little education for you. Fast token, see the circulating supply? 329 million. The total supply is 880 and the max supply is 1 billion. Now I believe they burned 120 million, which will be put back. Excuse me, if it's burned, I think it's, it can go back. But it, you have 880, you have not even 50% of it is uh, if it's circulating supply. And if you go to, I just learned this trick a couple of days ago, Coin market cap. Usually there's a way to look at the unlocks, but this one is so new, it doesn't have the, the uh, unlock information. So you have to take a look at the white paper. Again, something just to look at to see where things are going. But I gotta tell you, if you've come out of nowhere, let me see something. Look at this price appreciation. The question I would have is when are the investors, and that would be the VCs, going to have the unlocks. And if it happened already, great. But if it didn't, you could be in for a world of hurt. So this, pr just by price action, looks pretty good. But what about the other one? Uh, this one called Mantra. I took a look at this. This is a 2020 token. And look at where it was before. Really not too much, back and down. And then nothing for the whole 2022 bear market, right? accumulate going here. This wasn't on my radar. I don't have this, but look at this. What the hell happened? First of all, one thing you might notice about this, the circulating supply is 850 million. Total and max are 888. Essentially, you've got all the tokens out there. This looks pretty good. What does this token do? Real world assets. Mantra is a purpose-built real world asset layer one blockchain. Adherence to real world regulatory requirements. This is looking pretty good. I like this. Natural zone. There's a DEX. What's this? Oh, 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 here's all their investors and partners. Ando, just like I talked about. Ando is, I believe, correct me in the comments, one of those BlackRock real world asset crypto projects that could be integrated. And look, they got Chainlink, Hex, Informal, Stride. Swissborg trust. So then again, what is it? What else does it do? Ah, not just assets, but real estate tokenization. That's why I took a look at this. I go, this could be something that could do pretty well. So I'm not going to say that I'm going to get into this right away. I'm just saying that if you take a look at what's closest to its all time highs, again, this is just price action. You could have this could be artificially pumped up or not. It's just something for you to take a look at and go, Maybe there's something to this. Maybe somebody knows something that I don't know. Maybe I should do my own dil due diligence and do a little research and check it out. That's what I have for that piece. Let me know what you're going to do with that one. And then lastly, uh, we talked about uh, gaming yesterday. And congratulations again to Avalanche. They just had three and a half. I think now it's up to four million new wallets because of this one game off the grid. And um, funny enough, when uh, when we did the NFA live show, I asked Guy and Ben, I go, you know, what's your what's your altcoin picks? What's your top ones? And Guy said, Sui and Ave. And I was like, ah, oh, that's okay. I get Sui, but I didn't, didn't know Ave. And then this article was about how, you know, Donald J. Trump is going to use Ave for his own token. I'm sure there's a reason why they did that. Just saying. And then... Over here, 
this was a video today by Guy, and uh, I'll be damned if they didn't uh, invest into uh, off the grid. And then he does like a little gameplay. It's not as smooth as say like say like a crypto stash or something like that, but it was pretty good. How he just like, hey, this is a pretty cool game. Looks like the games that are out there. And also, you don't have to use crypto. It's just optional. So I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. So just a quick update. When I was talking about this yesterday, people were like, Rob, I'm not going to play that type of game. I'm just not going to. I'm like, ah, it's true. Most people are casual gamers. So I'm big in, the reason why I like Web3 Gaming and Avalanche and all those things is I think they have a future. And the reason why I like Ton or TonCoin is because it's attached to Telegram and Telegram has roughly 950 million users. So I think the next play for Web3 Gaming is within Ton. Not the crappy clicker games that are going on right now, but just a little upgrades. So this was an article, GameFi's next boom, how ton-based games and crypto are attracting millions. Blockchain gaming records 4.2 million users daily. It's pretty good, driven by, well, partially driven by ton. And the reason why it's driven is because people are playing this, these clicker games to get airdrops. After these airdrops are done, people are stopped, stopped playing them. A prime example, and I, I can't say stop totally. There was a game called Hamster Combat, and they had 300 million users at one, 3 million monthly, excuse me, 300 million monthly users. That's crazy. So think of it that way. They had 300 million, and out of those 300 million, I mean, it was 250 million, somewhere in, in that range towards the end, 130 million people were eligible for the airdrop. And surprisingly, Ton was able to do that. And did you hear about Ton going down within the last two or three weeks or whenever this airdrop happened? No, they were able to hold on to it and do it and not stutter. That to me is amazing on Ton. So, but now the question is, well, what about these clicker games? If you take a look at the monthly users for Amster Combat, I wanna say it's 101 million, somewhere between 100 and 104 million players. That's a far cry from what it had at uh, 300 or 275 million. So people are stopping to play. But if you take a look at the token itself, yes, it dropped off from its all time high when it first got released. But look at this, in all honesty, it's relatively stable for right now for where it's at. I know some people will say, well, it, it went all the way from here, but, not, but look at this. Amazing to me that they can actually do that. So there is that piece, but check this out. There's a game and I have no affiliation with them. It's called Haunted Space. And I was thinking to myself, okay, this is a game that I, that I play. I think most of you can play and it's not really AAA rated type of game. Check this out. I'm going to show you this real quick. It's like 30 seconds, so just bear with me. Look at this. So here, you're in Telegram. This is within Telegram, right? Moving things around. And this is actually, there's going to be an airdrop of this, that's true. But as time goes on, like if you're just here to like kill time, like let's say you're in line somewhere, or you're waiting for your wife to get out of some store. Like, just like, I'm just like looking at Twitter all day long. You just play this game, at some point you get an airdrop, that's actually kind of fun. So I look at these games and I'm thinking to myself, this is probably the type of game that people just want to like, uh, you know, mess around and have a good time. This would be something like that. So this types of games, I can see doing something past an actual airdrop. That's just how I see it. And yeah, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. That's it for today. So look, like today's video, Give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you want to go through a little Q&A, you might see there's a bunch of questions. I'll answer all your questions to the best of my abilities and we'll go from there. But you gotta take off, take off. It's Monday, go enjoy the fruits of your labor. You did a great job. You got all the way through most of the bear market. And I'm not saying that this thing won't collapse or have a big pullback at some point. It will, but appreciate the day. All right, everybody, thanks so much. I appreciate you and I'll get out of here.